is the seventh talk in the series of lectures on the central nervous system, the periphery nervous system, and the waters they live in. And in this lecture, we're going to look at the migration of the fluid, the waters of the central nervous system through the body of the central nervous system itself. Up until now we've looked at it traveling through the ventricles, down and out through the nerves and around the periphery of the central nervous system, down and around and out through the nerves. And in this one we're going to look at the cells of the central nervous system and the migration of the fluid through it. And I'm recording in nature, so it's really quite windy. The van I'm recording is blowing around a bit, so you may hear that as a background noise. And there also seems to be quite a lot of airplanes flying over at the minute, so you may be able to hear those. Um, the pictures I'm using, they're available for my website and it's really good to look at them on my website because there's a much better representation. You can see the details better on my website. Okay, we will start. So here we have the body of the central nervous system or somewhere in the central nervous system. And astrocyte cells. Microglial cells, these travel through, they swim through the central nervous system, they're a bit like the immune cells the central nervous system, the astrocyte cells connect to everything and provide the whole structure for the central nervous system. You have the capillaries bringing the waters of the central nervous system and later on they become the venous capillaries taking some of the fluids back to the heart. This is a neuron we have the axon that takes communication away. And these are myelinated glial cells that are wrapped around the axon. Here we have a ventricle. So we've talked about the ventricles like caves, underwater caves full of fluid. It gives a bit the impression that everything around it is quite solid. Caves are normally in rock. But um, these caves are more like spaces within seaweed. We have this sea, salt water, nutrients that all of these cells are living in. And they're receiving water, oxygen, nutrients from the water and they're giving off carbon dioxide, water, byproducts back in. Some is taken away by the venous blood and the rest is travelling off as a migrating kind of cranial lymph in a way because there isn't a lymph system from here or there is but it's a free form, it's travelling just openly down and away and out through the nerves. And some of it, here we have um, here we have epidymal cells lining the ventricles and in the choriplexus these are modified, they're very close together. But here they're not modified and they have gaps between them. So the cranial fluid can travel through this, like coming out of the seaweed into a space 
between the seaweed and there's a little bit of a current in these ventricles or spaces in the seaweed. There's an underwater current and it goes around into the third ventricle, down into the fourth ventricle, down and away. So these are like spaces in the seaweed and then it can also travel out, out the sides of the central nervous system through the subarachnoid space. This is the space that the fluids are traveling around the central nervous system and off down around the spinal cord out through the nerves. And then we're also going to look at the migration through the seaweed. So, so here we have the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the thalamus, the midbrain, pons, the medulla oblongata, the spinal cord. And some of this fluid comes in from the cerebrum around and away and the cerebellum down and away and some of it spreads out around out to the periphery down around the spine down around the spine and away and some of it will just travel through the body of the brainstem, from the cerebrum into the brainstem, from the cerebellum into the brainstem, through the actual body of the brainstem itself. It's a bit like moving from one seaweed patch to another. So it's faster through the ventricles and around. It can, once it's in those spaces, it can travel a little bit faster because there's no seaweed. Um, but it still slowly can mig migrate between the cells themselves. So we have this communication through the waters, through the whole cerebrum into the ventricles, third ventricle down, out through the waters of the cells, of the nerves. It has a particular quality, a particular feel to it. And it can travel out around to the sides and down. It has a very watery feel. So there's this feel of the waters traveling off down through the nerves and the energy traveling through the water. It has this very particular quality to it. And then as we travel through the body of the central nervous system, more with the cells, it, it, you feel the energies change slightly because it's not just open tracks of water, it's moving between the cells. So we have the water from the central nervous system coming. See how nicely the two hemispheres of the thalamus are placed, it can come into the thalamus. There's also tracks of nerves coming down directly into the midbrain below it from the whole cerebrum coming into these tracks into the midbrain, down through the brain stem. And also from the cerebellum, tracks of nerves coming into the pons, down, down the spine, out through the nerves. So again, here we have that from the side, the cerebellum, cerebrum, here. And some waters will come into these lovely open spaces and away. 
but also some will just travel directly from cerebrum into thalamus down, 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 down and also there's nerve tracts coming in and the whole but this area is like nerve tracts coming together into the midbrain, the pons there's nerve tracts from the pons out, these are cerebellum like trees, it spreads out like trees, they're like lungs out into the into the cerebellum and back again, forwards and back, so it connects the cerebellum to the cerebrum and then again down through the body of the spine and out through the nerves. The nerves are the same nerve tracts and we look at how the fluid can flow through these and around these. They set up tracks actually, fluid can slowly move along. So you've got the communication through the axons which we'll go into in a minute, through the glial cells, the myelinated glial cells around them, through the astrocytes, all travelling down, all bathing in water. It's not as fast as moving through the ventricles. It's slower, but all of these different communications, it has a different energy to it. You may feel that the energy of it changes when we move from these open ventricles, these open spaces of water, into the vibration of the waters within the body of the central nervous system. Slightly different feel to it. So we're going to start by looking at the neurons. So these are often called nerve fibers, but they're not actually fibers, they're tubes full of intercellular fluid and then within them there's some tiny, micros <laughs> already microscopic, but microscopic compared to microscopic in a way, tiny, tiny tubes within those. And also kind of the All cells have kind of a structure within them, like the muscles and bones for the cells, and these are all in there as well. And there's fluid flowing through it, intercellular fluid, in the body, down through the axons, and down through these smaller and smaller tubes. But rather than thinking fibers, think tubes, intercellular fluid, because that's what they are. And the electricity and the communication through the neurons is through these tubes of fluid. It's not 99% fluid like the fluid around it, but it is fluid. The electricity does travel through the fluid in tubes. So here we have synapses coming from another neuron and they arrive at these, the receptors, these are called dendrites. And then this comes into the body, there's the nucleus of the neuron, again it's intercellular fluid, 70-80% water, maybe more, maybe 90% water, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's a high percentage of water. And then the electricity or the communication from these synapses come into the body of this and then travel along the axon and out to another neuron and it will go to several. And this neuron receives the communication through its dendrites, travels off down through the axon. 100 billion neurons in our nervous system making hundreds of trillions of different connections to the other neurons.
And the neurons are only 15% of the cells within the central nervous system. The other 85% is the astrocyte cells, these myelinated glial cells, and the microgella cells are the other 85% that are communicating in this new way, like cell phones, just broadcasting out through the water and receiving back through the water. So they can broadcast from one part of the central nervous system, it goes out, and connects to a cell in another part of the central nervous system. There's a far more advanced communication system through these glial cells that up till the last couple of years were thought to be fillers, support cells, connective tissue, and now being found to be communicating in this way that can't be seen in science. So they can see the cells lighting up receiving the communication lighting up but they can't see the communication it's not electrical it's not electromagnetic and it's not particles it's like a knowing a sixth sense they're calling it a sixth sense so these myelinated glial cells are part of that So we have the two hemispheres of the cerebrum, now opening up in all directions, a bit like flowers, and the connection of these neurons going in all sorts of different ways. And then they come more and more together, and you have two branches of these coming down into the midbrain, and also connecting into the thalamus. And then come down, and the whole brainstem becomes these tracks of axons, nerves, called, let's call them nerve tubes for a minute, rather than nerve fibers, nerve tubes have got fluid in them, nerve tubes coming down into the brain stem, come into the pons, and from the pons the tracks are traveling back into cerebellum which also opens up like flowers these look like trees inside so the whole cerebrum comes down in these tracks into the midbrain into the thalamus into the ponds and then they all come back into the cerebrum so they're connecting these together and come back from the cerebrum into the ponds into the brain stem down the spinal cord all these tracks nerve tubes surrounded by water, 99% water, glucose, oxygen, also carbon dioxide and byproducts all traveling down. It's a large area here, smaller middle area here, and it's all the fluid slowly working down because it all can go through a hole in the bottom of the cranium, so it's all coming together and then traveling down through the spinal cord. And as it converges, you'll get some traveling around it converging. You'll get some down the very center of it converging. And you'll get some traveling through the body itself and down within from the medulla oblongata into the body of the spine and traveling along and through these nerve tubes. And also before it leaves you have the cranial nerves coming out from the pons, the medulla oblongata, the midbrain and also the optic nerve coming from the base of the thalamus. So we'll see later the cranial fluid or the waters can travel along the nerves. Then as these nerve tracts come down into the spine they travel out through the nerves themselves, the periphery nerves. We're going to look into this much later, how it travels down through these nerves. So you've got these nerve tubes, water around them, 
water-based fluid within them. Then around those you've got the astrocyte cells connecting everything. You've got microglial cells swimming, eating infections, one form or another, the immune system. And around these nerve tubes, not myelinated glial cells, and all of these glial cells communicate like cell phones. So you've got this electrical communication through all of the ten, hundred, hundred billion, one hundred billion neurons, fifteen percent of the matter of the central nervous system. And then you've got this far more advanced communication through all of these glial cells, which is a, a knowing, an understanding. And we're going to look at the myelinated glial cells first. And for me, these are fascinating cells and the whole last part of these lectures are completely based around these myelinated glial cells. These are wrapped around the axons. It's like a sheet wrapped around and around and around and around and around. So here we have a myelinated glial cell, here's the axon running through the middle, here's an axis is from above, here's the axon in the middle, myelinated glial cell around it. And here we have one from the side. Here's the axon in the middle. And notice this is the myelinated glial cell wraps around and around and around and around. That keeps going until we come to the outside face. And it's thicker on the first turning and on the last turning. But between that, as it grows, it starts, just comes to this as a cell and starts wrapping around and around. And then after the first turn, as it stretches out, it just becomes two cell walls wrapping around until the last bit. And as this continues going round, where it's tapering off here will continue and it will just become two cell walls moving out further. But notice between the cell walls, between these membranes, we have cranial fluid, we have water. So we have two coils. We have one coil of membranes, or cell walls, and one coil of water. So the waters travel through these myelinated glial cells. And these myelinated glial cells also communicate through water. And we'll go into this much more depth later, but also notice here we have little connectors. We have the same connectors all along the surface of these glial cells as we have in the endothelial cells around the capillaries that produce all the waters for the central nervous system. We have these same connectors in the plexus, which is producing the waters for the ventricles and we have these same
connectors in these glial cells. Where the glial cell is connecting to the axon, it's connected to these little blue connectors and it makes space just large enough for just water to travel through. And on the outside face, where it's turning around, we have these little connectors that makes this tight junction just wide enough for pure water, nothing else. So these cells, each one of these cells is a filter. The same type as filter as produces all of the fluid for the body of the central nervous system, the same gauge filter as the choriplexus. But every single one of these cells is one of those filters. Only water can get through that. Anything else, oxygen, glucose, minerals, sodium, will have to travel through the body of the cell itself to enter the environment inside. So again we have this environment, each cell is a filter and all of these coils of water, pure water and probably, I mean it's just, just not looked into yet, is also glucose, salt, oxygen, minerals for the inside of the cell and to feed the axon in the middle. It produces its own environment. Beautiful, beautiful cells. And this will wrap around hundreds of times. And here we have it from the sides, all these connecting, and then as it spreads out along the cell, it all opens up. These just become two cell walls thick, and then it opens up into this expanse of water. And here you have all the little connectors making a tight junction. All the surfaces coming in and all the surfaces coming out are a filter. So along all of these axons that are myelinated with these, we also have all of this purified water. So we're going to go on to this in the next lecture. Let's just meditate on this for a bit, breathing, feeling all of the cells, all of the waters coming in from the cerebrum, making these tracks coming in to the midbrain, also coming into the thalamus, down into the pons, back into the cerebellum, down, down the spinal cord, out through all of the nerves, which are the same thing. And then noticing that water traveling around. Notice we're dealing with a different quality than the open ventricles and breathe and just allowing that to all travel off down through the nerves. Okay, we're going to elaborate on this in the next talk. Thank you.